Okay, lecture 31, I'm going to speak about uh, the Schneider unit hydrograph method. And in that, I'm going to talk a little bit about why we have to have synthetic unit hydrographs and then uh, get into discussion of, of the Schneider method. Essentially, as I mentioned in lecture 28, one of the best ways to get a unit hydrograph is if you have actual real data. But that's only on a number of sites around the country, relatively small, that actual data is available. So in most cases, you're going to be stuck with uh, doing a, what's called a synthetic unit hydrograph, which is a hydrograph that's developed uh, synthetically or uh, artificially uh, using methodology that's been developed off of real data, um, but not necessarily the data from your particular site. The Schneider is one of those methods which we're covering in this lecture. The SES method is one that we'll cover in lecture, 20, er, lecture 32. <clears throat> so let's talk about some definitions first. And uh, let me grab here real quick uh, my pen and we'll, we'll talk a little bit. So the first thing I want to talk about is the time to peak. And that's going to be the time <clears throat> from the beginning of the rainfall. And let's switch colors here real quick beginning of the rainfall until the peak of the hydrograph, which is right here. And <clears throat> that's uh, essentially just a common term that you'll see in uh, hydrology. The next two things are <clears throat> this basin lag and lag time, which is going to be the time of the centroid, not the necessarily the beginning of the excess rainfall amount, but the centroid of that to that time to peak. Time of concentration is going to be the time of flow from the farthest point in the watershed to the outlet. So if I draw some kind of hypothetical watershed here where I've got an outlet location right here at the end and I've got some sort of stream that uh, you know goes down to that point, if I take the hydraulically most remote point and figure out if a drop of water at this hydraulically most remote point, what kind of time does it take to get to the outlet? That's going to be my time of concentration. The base time is going to be the length of time for the entire unit hydrograph. So this is the base time all the way from the, the beginning of the unit hydrograph to the end of the unit hydrograph. And you can see I'm showing you here, uh, this is a, 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 a synthetic unit hydrograph. This is actually the NRCS unit hydrograph here, or the SCS. And you've got both the triangular unit hydrograph and this uh, uh, dimensionless uh, unit hydrograph here that goes all the way out here to about uh, a factor of five. <clears throat> okay, but that base time is the length of time for that unit hydrograph from the beginning to the end. The recession time is the time from the peak to the end of the unit hydrograph. And then the effective duration is the amount of time it takes to get that one inch of excess rainfall onto the watershed for that unit hydrograph. These are all definitions that you need to be familiar with. All right, as we look at this, let me grab my, uh, change the colors here. Uh, a triangular unit hydrograph is what the Schneider method is, and it has parameters of the peak uh, value for the hydrograph, the time to peak, which again is the time from the beginning of excess rainfall to the peak of the, of the hydrograph, the, uh, uh, basically the basin lag, which is this TPR, and I've defined that on the previous slide as the time from the centroid of, of rainfall excess to the peak, then this effective duration, how long does it take to get that uh, one inch of rainfall on the watershed, and then the time of concentration, which is the time of flow from the farthest point to the outlet. So these these uh, factors, the base, uh, the time of the base here, the peak value, the time to peak, those are all things that we're going to compute as part of this um, synthetic method to develop, and then we'll we'll have our, hydro, our unit hydrograph. So here are the equations to uh, estimate those parameters. The first, time, uh, first uh, equation is the value of the uh, peak flow rate, and essentially this C2 is a uh, units conversion parameter, or, uh, you know, for, and so if you've got English units at 640, SI is 2.75, then you've got this C sub P as a regional parameter that you'll either get from textbook values out of a table or from a nearby uh, gauge stream where you've got data and you could back calculate this C sub P. Then we've got the basin area, and then we've got the basin lag. And again, that basin lag is uh, essentially the time from the uh, centroid of the excess rainfall to the peak flow, uh, the peak of the uh, hydrograph, the unit hydrograph. So 
to calculate the time to peak, we're going to essentially uh, calculate that as this equation here, the, the second one. And we've got this value of the conversion of units, C1, one if it's uh, uh, British gravitational or English units, 0.75 if it's SI. And then this regional parameter, C sub T, uh, again, you're much like the C sub P parameter up, up above, you're going to get that either out of a textbook or from nearby a gauge stream. Then I've got the length of main, the main channel in miles or, square, or kilometers, and then the length of the main channel from the, the outflow point upstream to the point opposite the centroid of the basin. So what do we mean there? So if I've got uh, a, a drainage basin, and I'll just draw that here just kind of roughly, and I've got the outlet right here, and I've got some sort of stream that's in that, and we're running our unit hydrograph down here to the bottom, the distance, uh, the main channel length would be this, this L, so that would go all along this main channel here, that would be the L, and then the L sub C would be the length of the main channel from the outflow point, which is right here, to a point upstream that's that's right directly opposite the centroid of the basin. So in this case, the centroid of the basin, we could say is, you know, roughly maybe right in here somewhere, and so we would look at this distance being from here down to the outlet, so that'd be the L sub C. So we would get that through either GIS or, you know, having a, the drainage area drawn out on a topographic map and, and just kind of figuring out, you know, maybe by eyeball if you can do it roughly or if you've got some sort of technique to, to do that, uh, uh, you know, either graphically or, or, you know, again, GIS is the best way to, t to tackle that. And we could calculate those values of L sub C. Uh, and then the last thing is this effective duration. That's the time it takes to get our... Uh, one inch of rainfall on the on the watershed, and that's essentially this T sub P divided by 5.5. So this is the first equation you're going to solve here is for T sub P, and then you're going to get the uh, effective duration of the unit hydrograph and the Q sub P once you have that T sub P value. If we need the uh, effective duration uh, uh, different than what was computed originally in the in the previous slide here. That where we had uh, an effective duration down here. Now, you could always go the, uh, the S-curve, uh, S-hydrograph method that we've talked about in lecture uh, 30. But you can also, with Schneider, you can actually do a, a transposition uh, into a different effective duration time simply using this equation here, where uh, the uh, T sub, uh, sub R is the different to, uh, computed lag time, or uh, I'm sorry, effective duration, and you're essentially calculating a new value of the time to peak from that, where you've got the old time to peak at the beginning of this equation. Let me change uh, colors here on my uh, pointer. So I've got the old time to peak here, and then I've got my new value, or I got my existing value of the uh, effective duration, but then I have my new value of the effective duration I want to go to. So we can we essentially change this t, uh, the time to peak of the new unit hydrograph you're after with a new effective duration, and then you plug that value in to get a brand new value of the uh, peak uh, flow uh, rate for the for the uh, unit hydrograph. All right. So uh, once we've got the peak flow rate, we've got the time to peak. We need to get some parameters on the base. You know the the distance. You know, uh, from uh, the beginning of the unit hydrograph to the end, that's the time to the base, or the base time of the hydrograph, and then some width parameters that give us some shaping values uh, at 50% uh, of the peak flow and 75% of the peak flow. And you get those, uh, again, let me change colors here. You, go th you get those from these two equations here, where this would be the width of the hydrograph uh, w50 is the width of the hydrograph at the location of the 50% of the peak, which is right here. That's the w50 would be from here to there, essentially. And we're drawing that out. The w75 is going to be the width at 75% of the peak, which is going to be third of that uh, uh, width at the 50% at the, at the beginning of the, before the peak and two-thirds of it's after the peak. And again, as, as I've noted to you, uh, when we've talked about hydrographs, you know, you get a much ra a more rapid rise to the peak, it's quicker, and then 
as the uh, hydrograph recedes, you get a, a falling limb of the hydrograph and it's much more drawn out than the initial uh, rising limb. And so you can calculate, the, calculate these based on your values of the peak flow rate, uh, the drainage area, and uh, a parameterization that's based on uh, the, the unit's conversion. So if I've got English units, it's 770 for the C50. And if I've got British, or if I've got uh, SI, it's 2.14. And then the same thing down here for the W75, the, the C75 is going to be 440 if it's English units and 1.22 if it's SI. And then um, the time to base is given uh, in a couple different ways. Mays in the textbook uh, gives this as the equation for that. Uh, if you look at uh, uh, what Dr. Chen says in his uh, water resource engineering textbook that we used to use, uh, it's a rough estimate. TB is three to five times uh, uh, the uh, time to peak. So if you look at the time to peak being uh, this distance here from the beginning of the excess precipitation to the peak, that's my T sub P. Then I'm just going to take three to five times that and make that my base value. And then Mays, uh, our child maintenance maze in the applied hydrology textbook, which I referred to you before, has a, a different equation again that they use where they've got this C3 times the drainage area divided by uh, QPR. If you look at some of the uh, regional parameters that uh, might be available for certain parts of the country, if in the Appalachian Highlands, uh, here we've got some C sub P value 0.63, C sub T value is a 2.0, and again, those are going to be applied uh, here uh, in the uh, Q sub P equation uh, for C sub P and for the time of uh, time to peak equation that's there. And if you're in Southern California, Eastern Gulf of Mexico, you've got different values. And again, uh, there are other textbooks, that are, if you use this method, uh, there are other definitions for various other regions. Um, again, um, it's best if you have data in a nearby basin that you can actually back calculate these values of C sub P and C sub T. Um, if you look on page 296 in table 8.4.1, you get a very good step-by-step -step methodology for the Schneider. And then uh, you can see the example in 8.4. Point one, which will walk you through it, and then obviously you've got some homework assignments. All right, in the next lecture in 32, I'll talk about the SES method for the synthetic unit hydrograph, and you can uh, learn, you know, that's going to be the one that we're going to concentrate on in this class.